There are six levels of research skills that you need to master if you're going to be successful in academia and have a long career. Now here we've got the pyramid of six skills, but the problem is most people arguably get stuck in the first two and then kind of get like a little bit lost at this third level of research skills. And it's only really by focusing on working on each individual skill and looking for opportunities to essentially practice each one that people really make their way up to the top of this successful pyramid of research skills. Let's put a little crown on it to say that you're the champion. There we are, there we are at the top. So the first skill that you need to know about is this, and I call it the doing skill. Doing. The dong. <laughs> No, doing. Oh, anyway, <laughs> you get it. It's the doing skill. Everyone needs to master essentially becoming the technician of their research. You need to be able to go in and do the actual work, produce results, analyze stuff. That is the first level and it's what a lot of people start at. Whether or not they're starting in a master's or honors year or they're doing undergraduate research, it's the doing. It's the act of someone going into the lab and just making shit happen. And that takes ages. That's the foundation on which all of an academic career is built on, but it doesn't stop there by any means. Now, this this normally looks like a professor or a researcher saying to a student, go and do this and you go and do it. You learn skills, you learn techniques and that's the first level. That is by far where most people end up just getting stuck. They stay the doer and they don't look to build the next skills and the next one is very important. The next level up on this skill pyramid is directing. So you have to direct someone to do the research for you. Now, as a PhD student, that may look like undergraduate or master's students. As a postdoc, it may look like PhD students. And it's more about just explaining what you expect the outcome of the sort of like experiment to achieve. So really, this is that first time you're taking a step back from the research and you're looking at people and you're saying, okay, you're gonna do the doing part. I'm gonna train you how to do that. And this is how, um, I guess, I expect the research to go and you sort of like walk them through that process. That directing step is the first taste that you get of really understanding the research to a point where you can explain it to someone else and that is kind of the first little step out of the doing phase. So if you're directing someone in the lab, a master's, PhD, um, or any student, then you need to build those skills in explaining what you mean, training them up on particular instruments. And I've seen people get so frustrated when they're doing the directing part because it's not how they would do it. They're like, oh, it's just so frustrating. They don't do it properly. They don't do it the way I'm saying. But unfortunately, that's just part of the learning process of learning to direct people in research. So you need to Take that leadership role and kind of like help the people you're directing through problems and uh, that really is the first step of taking a step out of the doing part the technician role and becoming more of kind a i like that word okay the next one is very important all right, the next level that you need to master is designing. The designing part of research is where a lot of people come unstuck in their career progression because they're the doers. They've got all the skills. They're seen as valuable as that person. They started to direct people, i.e. when they start uh, sort of like that first step of collaborating, they can direct someone to the results that they need or train someone up so that they do some of the doing for them. But when it comes to designing, this is where you need to sort of like step back from the nuts and bolts, the daily work, and have a look at designing experiments that achieve this like massive goal. And that is really tough, because quite often in the doing part, we're designing experiments which work on little tiny parts of a bigger project, quite often controlled by a principal investigator or a you know, professor, an academic that's been around for a long time. But now you need to take a step back and say, okay, what essentially career niche am I designing for myself? That is a really tough step to make because you need to suddenly zoom out of this doing, of this designing individual experiments and start designing your overall niche. Like, are you in, for me, the OPV world? 
world. Also, in the organic photovoltaic devices, which is what OPV stands for, what am I doing? Active layer, transparent electrode. Which one am I going to be known for? And that designing aspect takes a few years to kind of like really work through a bit of trial and error, a bit of trying to find your niche, but that designing of your career going forward is where a lot of people come unstuck because they cannot zoom out from the doing part of research because quite often sometimes people love that aspect and the next stage up just doesn't really interest them and that's absolutely okay but you need to be able to design your own sort of like broad sweeping um, career uh, ex uh, experimental kind of like goals if you want to progress up this kind of next few levels of research skills. Okay, the fourth level is collaborating. Now we've all heard it, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Yes, we get it. But collaborating is more than just working with someone. It's about understanding their research niche. You're stepping outside of yours and you're trying to understand where they are in the world of research and also where that overlap is. The overlap is just as important as the conflicts that your two um, sort of like niches coming together may cause. Collaborating is frustrating. It's much slower because now you need to talk to people. You need to work out where you have complementary skill sets, pass over um, sort of experimental data, pass over samples, pass backwards and forwards emails. Like it is just a huge part of academia and collaborating is very, very tough. However, it's kind of that saying, now I'm going to get this completely wrong, but if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together or something like that. It, it, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's a saying that's better than that one, but you get the idea. Collaboration and this level of research means that you can go much further. You're bringing together complementary skill sets, but you are moving very, very slow. And the problem is this is not a luxury many early career academics have because they need results. They need to get papers. They need to secure a career for themselves. So at this point, this is where really you start trying to forge your own um, academic career and pathway away from, you know, your principal investigators, away from other people that you've been working under. And this looks like applying for grants. It looks like, um, you know, speaking to other professors, reaching out even beyond your university to other universities and other campuses. And all of that takes time. It's about relationship building and it's very, very tough to do. But ultimately collaborating is one of the most important skills if you want to go far in research. And uh, it is something that early career researchers don't have, I guess, the luxury of the connections early in their career. So it is about just going out, meeting people, finding out what they do, go to conferences, go to events, go to symposia, get speaking to people, find out what they do, uh, all of that stuff, which is very, very tiring and time consuming. Nonetheless, it is a skill and a research um, level that you need to master. The fifth level, as we start going up this pyramid. Oh, we're almost there, at the crown, at the top of the research pyramid. But this is about leading leading research. And I don't mean just like bossing people around. I mean like becoming a leader in research takes many, many years of building up networks, of building the foundation, making sure you've got collaborators across multiple um, areas of the world, of the country, even in the same um, university, across multiple departments. Like that is where I think real uh, academic research these days is made into sort of like real life outcomes because you are sort of like across multiple niches and this level of leading research is something that is incredibly challenging. I led very small research projects when I got my own grant funding um, as part of my postdocs and I could just see the amount of admin that went into it, the amount of uh, you know reporting, the amount of just like stuff, the university one, all of the accounts, all of the managing, but it's all of that boring stuff really that is under this leading research um, sort of uh, skill level. So you need to um, essentially get comfortable doing stuff you've never done before. Finances, writing reports, speaking to like government, speaking to funding bodies. That sort of stuff is really the nuts and bolts of this leading part of research. Leading research is not just sort of like having a research group and being like, oh, you do this, you do this. Now we're doing this experiment. It's rather looking upwards and going, um, 
I need money to do this, I need money to do this. And that looking up is to like the university, to governments, to funding bodies, um, and sort of like uh, telling them what you want to do and, uh, and then sort of like passing that information down to the people beneath you and be like, okay, now we do this, we do this, we do this, and it's incredibly challenging, but it's not as challenging as the final level of this research pyramid. Okay, the sixth and final level of this research skill mastery is all about convincing. Convincing people that you know what you're doing, that you should get money, and that your research is important. That is the hardest skill to master. But the people that go far in academia always, invariably, have the ability to be persuasive and convince people that what they're doing is important. Sometimes I'm thinking to myself, like, do these people actually believe what they're saying or is it all just a ruse? I don't know the answer to that one, but ultimately the outside sort of like sees them as just authoritative. That's the word, authoritative. And so they go, oh yes, this person should get money. This person is doing good stuff. And not only do you need to convince people up, you convince people down. One of the most important things at this level you can do is convince people under you that what you're doing matters. You give them purpose. You give them um, a reason to be doing their research. You know, you help them with that intrinsic motivation. You do that by being a good communicator, by communicating the right aspects in the right way to different people at different levels. Up, down, sideways, it all matters. And convincing people is a massive, massive skill that every researcher and every successful professor I've ever met has in abundance. And it is one of the most difficult skills to um, acquire. Because it's not like a sleazy car salesman where you're just pointing out the features and be like, oh, it can go 0 to 60 in three seconds. Look, it's got lovely shiny glossy top. Look at the windscreen wipers. You can tell I've never sold a car but this is the most important skill you need is it's not just the features it's about passing in the feeling of confidence to people and that is uh, incredibly tough nonetheless you know when a professor's got it because after sitting down with them for a little bit you leave a meeting and you're like, oh, yes, oh, we can do this. This is so important. And then a couple of hours later, you're like, I think I was just kind of like manipulated and brainwashed a little bit. But that is the power of persuasion that these successful people have in abundance and you need to start reading books. So those are the six levels of research skills you need to master. You've got doing or dong, directing, designing, collaborating, leading and convincing. All of these levels build on each other. And if you try to skip one, you're gonna be in a world of pain because they build slowly on top of each other. Let me know in the comments which ones you would add. And also, if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the PhD effect, how it rewires your brain. It's a good watch.